That's wild. You're my husband? What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Fitness For You podcast. Today, I have Melissa Schickalone in the studio. Oh my gosh, you are so hard to book. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Now, you guys need to understand that we had to go through agents. We had to go through lawyers just to get her on the show. Mm -hmm. And she finally made time in her schedule to come through. So thank you for coming on the show. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So question for you. Question for you. Mm -hmm. So... You are a, more like a statement, <laughs> you are a D2 midfielder lacrosse player, correct? Retired, but yes. Yes. And let me get this straight. So you were actually one of the best in the country at one point with um, 486 draw controls, over 200 career goals, right? And you started every single game that you played, correct? Yes. Huh. That's pretty cool. Now, I don't know much about lacrosse, but that is pretty impressive. So another thing, you also were recruited to be on the All-Star game, correct? Mm-hmm. Awesome. See, I'm saying all this stuff because she wouldn't say that on her own, right? I kind of humble bragged her into the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. No choice, though. No choice. I, I'm, <laughs> if you haven't guessed, I'm her husband. So I'm going to brag on her. <laughs> what? What? That's why you're my husband. Anyways, anyways, anyways. So you have had a big transition from playing college lacrosse. You're mm -hmm. basically your whole life, right? Lacrosse has been your whole thing. About almost 10 years. About 10 years of your life has been lacrosse and you lived, you breathed it, you know, so what was some of your body image struggles at that time? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't even know where to start. I think just like women in sports in general, um, women with body image is like its own topic, but women in sports with body image, I think is just like a mental struggle that a lot of people don't talk about or right. like want to talk about. Mm -hmm. And like, I still struggle with talking about it. Um, but I would say one of the biggest things was I'm a pretty tall person. And I couldn't tell. <laughs> <laughs> and it was always the like, why, um, why don't I look like the smaller girls yeah. kind of mm -hmm. and muscular builds, I feel like just aren't as glorified as they are now, like sure. back then, mm -hmm. um, even though I've, I've been out of college for like a year and a half now, which like I'm, makes me sound like I'm really old, but I'm really not. Um, but like <laughs> growing up, it, that's just, that was like the stigma, like muscled bodies weren't the it factor it was like paper thin and, yeah and just like how much would that change do you feel like social media played a huge role in just crafting this imagery of you gotta look super thin you can't look muscular no you have a unique physique no you can't look like that yes huh yeah mm. yeah because it's like you want to lift weights to get stronger and get better at your sport but right. then when you lift weights you get muscle which is great. Grow muscle. This is what this podcast is about. And, <laughs> but right. like at the time, like it was just, you need to run fast. You need to do your sport. Well, if you get strong, that's awesome. It's going to like help, you know, injury prevention and like ultimately help you be athletic in your sport. But at the same time, it's like, but I don't want to get bigger, you know? Right. So with you, that stigma. So your quest is you basically were on a road to, you wanted to be thin. <laughs> At one yeah. point. Okay. You wanted to be thin and you just really, maybe you didn't know, you didn't really understand like there was a difference. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Seriously. Mm -hmm. You didn't know that there was a difference between like sports athletics and then body composition change. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I thought like if you are an athlete, either you have to look jacked mm -hmm. or you have to be super thin. Yeah. And I like, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, we better edit that out. <laughs> With my body type, I didn't think I was either. Yeah. Until I looked back at photos and that's different. Um, but I didn't think I was either and I didn't feel like I looked like that typical like athletic woman. Right, right. I remember when we actually first started dating and at the time she was still playing, you know, college lacrosse. Right, lacrosse. There we go. There we you go. were still playing college lacrosse. 
Mm-hmm. There's a picture of her. And I had no idea what lacrosse was. I just thought it was like, oh, you know, you grab the ball and you throw it and this and that, right? Mm-hmm. Right. I still kind of think that, but yeah, I yell. I'm like, oh, yellow yell card. Lot. I yell a lot. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I don't even know what I'm yelling at, but I'm yelling nonetheless. But I remember you weren't really lifting weights at the time. You just started running. Yeah, we were we were lifting weights, and it's very functional, and I absolutely loved my strength and conditioning coaches. They were wonderful. Um, and it, it was like, like I said, it was like to get injury prevention and to get stronger in our specific sport. Mm-hmm. It wasn't so much as like body composition. Sure. Which I didn't click didn't click like you were working out for strength and you were working yeah. out for things but you know oh, i'm not trying to lose body fat and build muscle so what about like your teammates at the time because i know you have a wonderful relationship mm-hmm. with them then i love and now. them i love right. them um, um you what was it like you know as a collective with body image did you guys kind of like share the same thoughts how did you guys support each other during that time like what did that look like yeah i won't like really speak for them because i don't know what they think or anything like that but like I really kept it to myself sure like I just didn't feel like the need to share Mm -hmm. did you feel like it was such a struggle that like oh no one would understand what I'm going through yes and no I think because I didn't think my problems were as bigger as other people's Mm -hmm. and that my problems just weren't significant so I was just like I'll just deal with it in my head yeah. It's not good. Don't do that. And I remember <laughs> like me and you would legitimately like I didn't understand at the time when I was dating her that you were going through such body image issues. Mm-hmm. I'd be like, oh, babe, you look beautiful. You look amazing. Blah, blah, blah. Mm. Welcome. <laughs> I don't know about now. No, I'm joking. I'm, joking. I'm totally joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. She's going to kill me. Um, oh, but um, <laughs> last time I'm booked for a podcast. <laughs> a Bobcast? I said a podcast. Podcast. This is a great podcast. I think I said way. Bobcast. You did say Bobcast. My bad. I said Lacroix. You. Instead of Lacroix. You know what? Yeah, you did. Even. No. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> so, but where was I? Yeah, I basically was saying, you know, you're beautiful, you're this and that, but you were in your, you had a, you were in a whole nother world. You were fighting voices in your head, practically. Oh, yeah. Those ones never shut up. <laughs> what was like, what, now at that time when you were struggling with it hardcore, mm-hmm. what did you, what did you do to either mask it or get away from it? Um, I either ignored it, mm-hmm. which is like n- not something you want to do, or I would like, which this sounds really bad. I would like just not feel my body like I needed to. Thinking like, oh, I'll just lose the weight that way. Don't do that. Don't do that. Mm. Um, or like, I, I guess that's kind of, I would mostly just ignore them though. And I yeah. would either like probably put on like baggy clothing, not feel good internally, even though on the outside I was like all smiley. Right. So you were just hiding all this stuff and you you felt bad about yourself. So you didn't show the world how you really looked and, and whatnot. Yeah. Right? And it wasn't like anyone telling me anything like I mean stuff in the past is stuff in the past but like no one during my collegiate career ever came at me for like my body image of course which, right so that it, like truly was all mental which is a really big aspect in collegiate sports nowadays so now you were a collegiate athlete you got done with a wonderful career right you got all these accolades behind you I'll say it no one else needs to <laughs> um you got all these accolades you're number two in the nation you retire <laughs> yeah <laughs> what the heck happened Oh, um, obviously I missed it. It was really hard, Mm -hmm. especially not being like, you never realize how much you enjoy being around people you really like you love Mm -hmm. until they're not around you anymore. And they're not convenient. Like I miss all of my friends every single day. Absolutely miss them. Mm -hmm. They're just like a family to me. And it's really hard. Not that like not staying in contact isn't like hard, but it's like, it's hard not seeing them every day, like going over to their apartment or just like seeing them at practice. Right. Like it's not, that's definitely a hard, hard part of it. Now you're just stuck in a house with your husband all day. Yeah. Which, whoa, how did that get in here? <laughs> I was really trying to ignore it. And then it buzzed in my ear. That was the last time. Like we had a podcast. It was like two flies and they kept flying around. We're like, stop it. I'm trying to do a podcast. Come on, man. Yada, they should, yada, yada. They should know. They should know. But mm-hmm. anyway, So you transition out. Mm -hmm. What has been your journey like in exercise and Mm -hmm. in fitness and in health now that you're out of the sport? What does that look like and how are you tackling body image? Yeah, it's I mean, it definitely 
taught me a lot it's really hard leaving collegiate sports because they like you have a schedule every single day all day Mm -hmm. like sometimes even sunday like i have to go to bed at this time because i have to wake up in the morning for practice you know Mm -hmm. and learning a schedule was really hard and especially like not being as vigorous with the with exercising like in practice like in games I don't, if anyone knows anything about lacrosse which i hope you do um i was a midfielder like you said right. so i would be running like at least seven miles a game yeah and you don't realize it because you're fun you're having fun you right. know you're just running up and down the field and um i think a really big change for me which i honestly just got over like a f- couple months ago was i felt like i had to run to burn as many calories as i could right wow yeah wow and you just got over that I kind of just got over like mental mental health. You struggle with every day, still struggling with it, but right. it's kind of more manageable, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I would, I felt like like I had to run all the time. If I didn't burn so many calories in a workout, like I felt like I had to run it off. Yeah, and a part of my brain still feels like that, but not like specifically with running, which I still really really enjoy. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of nice like seeing what my body likes instead of all that vigorous activity. Now I know. Me and you have been, we're, we come from two different worlds. I come from a bodybuilding world. She comes from a sports world, right? Meaning I can flex in my underwear and she can throw a ball really well, right? <laughs> Facts. Facts, right? Um, don't ask me to throw a ball. It's not happening. No. Um, but I was at a point where I was like, I knew what you wanted. I knew the advice that you needed to give, mm-hmm. but I needed to give this to you sparingly because mm-hmm. you can only take so much at a time. There was a point recently like there was a transition where it was almost like acceptance of that body image, mm-hmm. right? And you were able to be like, cause I know you have good and bad days. You were able to say, oh, yeah. oh no, this is my body, right? Mm-hmm. And I love it for what it is, mm-hmm. right? What made, what was that transition like? How did you do it? What's the secret? If there was a secret, I would tell you guys, but I, I honestly, I don't really know. But I think one thing that got me through it was like having a great support system mm-hmm. like you, which shout out that's me yeah i'm a husband (laughs) yeah um it's also like you you hear all the time like god created you in the way that he wants like he meant for you to be created right and honestly that's a lot harder to accept than i feel like people realize it's like oh well god wants this for me but you know like my brain still grasp can't grasp it so i like feel like i'm not yeah. obeying god by like accepting that mm-hmm. but if you re- truly think about like how he sees you and how i see myself like that's that's one thing and right. it's like well he doesn't see the flaws that i do i look in a mirror and i see everything wrong whereas he sees everything right right you know mm-hmm. that kind of helps um i also just kind of focus on like well my body will do what it wants and yeah. it'll change how it wants like i want muscles i yeah. want to I want to lift weight. Uh I want to, I just, you know, want to create my body as a temple and take good care of it. And I really enjoyed lifting and like doing a different form of working out. Right. Seeing how my body reacts to it. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like what I've been working on. Would you say this? Would you say that part of the secret to overcoming body image is not to hide from it like you did originally, but to face it head on? Yeah. Yes and no. I feel like a lot of the time, like I would rather have just like hit it head on and kind of go from there. But then other times, like sometimes it feels so overwhelming and so like, you know, it's not true Mm -hmm. that I just don't even want to hear it. Um, But you can't run from it completely because then you're going to think about that more, like completely getting away from it, Mm -hmm. which is impossible with anything. Yeah. So if you kind of like compartmentalize it and say like, oh, I'm not going to like, I see you you're there, but I'm not going to let you ruin my day. Right. Kind of makes it a little bit better. Now, because that that totally makes sense to me, and I've learned so much being around you and you just going through – like I I had no idea women struggled with this type of body image Mm -hmm. issues. Men do too, but not at the level that women do. And, you know, Mm -hmm. we can go into topics of body positivity. We can talk about how social media has, you know, has, you know, done so much damage. But the real question is – if you were to go back in time, let's just say there is a lacrosse player out there. Let's just say there is an athlete out there, a female athlete who's struggling with their body image issues, right? What is the best advice that you would give them? An uncensored, brutal, honest truth to help them in their time of need. What would you say? That's a hard-hitting question. Um, oh, 
Sorry, I like that's a really big question. Big question. Um, if I could go back and tell maybe like my freshman year self something, um, I think it would. This is kind of like I don't know if this kind of counts. I would tell myself a better way to like eat. Yeah. Um, but like you do, the, everyone does that at college. Like you kind of go crazy. Sure. Um, I would probably try to educate myself on how to eat better. And then I would kind of, I would want to tell myself like, it's really not that big of a deal. Right. Like your body can run, your body can throw a ball, your body can have fun with your friends and, you know, sit in class and everything like that. And I think I would think of it as like, it's, it's a significant problem and you shouldn't just completely subside it. And it's worth your time talking to someone about it. But at the same time, like, don't let it completely control your life. Right. I think that you hit the nail on the head. Do yeah. not let it completely control your life. Yeah. And I think also, too, like, everyone thinks about themselves. Mm-hmm. And I don't think it's in, like, an intentional, selfish way. But it's like, you also hear this cliche saying of, like, people are thinking of themselves more than they th- you think they're thinking of you. Mm-hmm. So you can kind of think of it like that too. Mm -hmm. Like, trust me, no one's going to notice how tight your pants are on you. Right. Only you are because they're thinking about what they're wearing. Right. How many times like we'd be be going out, you'd be like, oh, I don't like this. I'm bloated. I'm this, I'm that. And I I don't feel right. And I'm looking at you like you got 10 heads. Like I have what's going on. Yeah. Like like I don't, I don't see it. You know, I I still struggle with that, but I'm hoping to diminish that a little bit, Mm -hmm. you know, as time goes on. But it's kind of interesting to see to hear someone's outside perspective because my brain's just a bunch of thoughts that no one can hear. Whereas you're like, oh, no, like it's fine. It's fine. You look great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't see an issue. You look hot, baby. Yeah. Let's go out <laughs> to dinner. And you're like, no, I got to change my outfit like 500 times, but that's okay. <laughs> Gosh, when we got married, I had no idea that was a thing. She'd be like, how does this look? You want the red or the blue one? I'm like, oh, the red one looks good. I'm going to do the blue. And I'm like, huh? You know what? Let a woman do what a woman needs. Yep. Okay. My new answer is, yes, honey. Mm-hmm. Red As or blue. It should. As uh-huh. it should. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Th- I, think that's, I think that's super wonderful. Um, I think that was awesome. Thank you very much for breaking down, you know, basically all the things that a young college athlete would need to do. Do you have any final words that you would like to give? Um, yeah, I mean, this is really fun. So thank you. I've never talked about this like so publicly. So this is You're a little scary. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, he just like sprung this on me today and was like, Hey, you want to talk about this? And I'm like, yeah, let me just share my deepest, darkest thoughts. <laughs> All right. Um, but I would say like in the collegiate sport world, um, and coaching in it now, because I just absolutely love it. Mm-hmm. Um, Mental health is a giant concern and is a giant thing that should be prioritized in collegiate athletes, like men, women, whatever, whatever sport. And I think if you're really struggling, like talk to your coach, talk to someone, talk to a counselor, Mm -hmm. because like um, a lot of people are struggling through stuff that like you don't even realize. Yeah. Um, there's like a whole thing about Morgan's message, which a lot of people probably know of. And it's just like the whole mental health aspect, I think should be a really big um, priority for people. Huge, huge. Mm-hmm. Cause if, if you're not okay mentally, right. If you're not doing good mentally, you are not going to a be able to pour out into other people mm-hmm. and you're not going to be able to do any kind of quality work. Mm-hmm. Correct. Yeah, Would you say and, that? and your your problems are significant. Like people want to hear you. People want to support you. Even if even if they don't know what to say, like even just talking to someone can change someone's whole mentality mm-hmm. on themselves on whatever they're going through. And I think that's really important to know because sports is super fun. And it should be, right. it should be enjoyed and getting better and everything like that. And like, who doesn't love to win? But at the same time, like you need to make sure you're mentally present and mm-hmm. mentally okay with where you're at and your teammates, your coaches, everyone would want to help you with that. Oh, wow. So. I think that's, you hit the nail on the head on that one. That was really good. Thank you. Really good. And I'm going to give a bonus tip for all the male, you know, counterparts mm-hmm. to the female. Mm-hmm. If your if your significant other is going through these body image issues, and this is something that I needed to learn very quickly, you need to be patient. You need to ask ask questions, ask big questions, but be okay with any response that you're going to get. 
-hmm. Your job isn't to solve the problem. Your job is to help them work it out, Mm -hmm. right? And when you feel like, oh, maybe I can give a little piece of advice, say, hey, can I give you a piece of advice? Always ask permission because at the end of the day, you don't want no one solving your problems. You just Mm want to be heard. No. And like you said, this isn't just for like women or anything like that. Like all collegiate athletes, I think, you know, we all struggle through something. This was just my perspective. Wow. So men, I know you guys go through it. I I hope something helped. Yeah, I go through it all the time. I'm just out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that was just my take since I'm a woman. <laughs> perfect. Well, I think that's a perfect way to end it, guys. I have a question for you. Do you want the secret to true happiness? Right, <laughs> this is my transition. Wait, hear me out. Hold on. The secret to true happiness. Yes, the secret to true happiness. We did a podcast last week, and I'm going to link it right above my wife's head. So click on that video. You guys are going to absolutely love it. And you guys know the deal. Love your body, love your mind, and love your soul.